Joanna and I am one of the flamingo keepers here at the Woodland Park Zoo. And today I get to introduce you to 38 of my good friends. We have our flock of Chilean flamingos here right in front of you. They're just enjoying their dinner. And I've got Paco kind of right in front of me here. He's one of our ambassador flamingos and he's about three years old. And <laughs> pellets are one of his favorite things, pellets and krill. And so he is in his happy place. <laughs> And so some of our flamingos are actually in their 40s. Our oldest will be 44 years old and older. Uh, we actually don't know how old our oldest one is, um, but flamingos in the wild and in zoos can live to be well into their 50s, 60s. Uh, the oldest flamingo on record actually made it to her 80s, which is pretty crazy. They are very long-lived birds and they actually don't start reproducing until they're about three or four years old on average. So they have a long life and they actually will produce one chick or one egg and one chick per year. So what I'm feeding them is some of the pellets like I mentioned before and it allows for them to get out on the water and feed naturally. So in the wild they would be eating uh, krill, zooplankton, shrimp, uh, other small invertebrates and algae. And here we give them a pellet and another mixture, which is behind me, that allows them to filter feed. So they're really, really good at filtering through water to get those nice little tasty crustaceans and algae. And another cool thing about Chilean flamingos is that they actually get these really bright ankles. So this is actually a flamingo's ankle. Their knees are located more up here and they're kind of tucked under their feathers. So it's kind of like they're all walking on their toes. So they're not, they don't really walk like we do with our flat foot. They kind of are balanced up and walking on their toes all the time. And they love to be in flocks, in large flocks. So out in the wild, you can see them in small groups, uh, maybe even a little smaller than this, up to flocks of tens and hundreds of thousands. It's very impressive seeing a whole group of them together. And they love being together. So they have a pretty unique social structure. They form friendships, they form bonds, They have birds that they might not get along with that well, um, and they kind of hang out with their little cliques. So they definitely have a more complex social structure than what meets the eye. But they also do dance, like I mentioned before, and that's part of their courtship behavior. So right about this time of year, we see our flamingos doing all sorts of fun things. So they do what's called a wing salute. So they'll kind of um, just stick out their wings and hold their head up high, and they'll flash a bright patch of well, a black patch on their wing and that's for displays and communicating with one another and then they'll also do what's called marching so they'll kind of get really loud they'll all start calling and they'll walk really really straight really quickly on one big close group and they'll go back and forth being very loud it is kind of kind of intimidating when you look up and you see a whole parade of flamingos coming at you <laughs> So, but it's really, really cool. And then they also do what is called head flagging. So if you're ever at the zoo and it's really quiet in the flamingo yard and you're like, oh, they're not really doing too much. Uh, if you take a minute and kind of watch their behavior, you might notice that some of them are kind of going back and forth with their head like that. And that is all part of a display. So they're all communicating. Uh, they're just not always as vocal about it. And they also do a funny dance move called the twist preen. So they'll take their head and they'll kind of turn it behind their back and they'll act like they're preening and then they'll kind of dip and come back up. So they have a whole repertoire of fun things that they do. Although flamingos live down in South America, there are things that we can do right here in Washington to help preserve waterways and wetlands that birds like flamingos and other animals use to survive. So some of the ideas that you can do are to reduce your pesticide use and to conserve your water usage as well. If you want some more ideas, you can head over to zoo.org and thank you for joining us today.